Good morning and welcome to CMC Markets on Friday the 1st of February and this quick look at the week beginning the 4th of February and it's been a fairly decent start to 2019. We've seen some decent gains for global equity markets in January. We haven't as yet uh, reversed the declines that we saw in December but certainly I think there is slightly more optimism in the markets than there was say for example 30 days ago at the end of December when um, equity markets have come, come off the back of one of the worst quarters we'd seen in quite some time. If we look at the FTSE 100, we're back above the 7,000 level. We've broken above the downtrend line that we've drawn from the highs that we saw in August. And if we look at also the S&P 500, we've broken a similar downtrend line from the highs that we saw in mid-September. That being said, there still, I think, remain some significant obstacles to further gains in US, European and more broadly equity markets in general. We've got the 200-day moving average on the S&P 500, which comes in around about 27.50. So we could see further gains over the course of the next few days, but there is a significant barrier through there, not to mention the fact that we've got three successive peaks just above 2,800 on the S&P as well. And that's likely to act as a significant barrier to further gains going forward. If we look at the UK 100, again, we've, we've managed to push above the 7,000 level and these series of peaks through here, but nonetheless, we still have a number of peaks around about 7,180, 7,200. I think in terms of support areas, a key area remains the 11,000 level on the DAX and I will be paying particular attention to that over the course of the next few days, as I have been all of this week, um, in the event that we see a little bit of a breakdown in that. But for now, um, the upside still remains the predominant, um, predominant area, I think, for the German DAX while we're above the 11,000 level. That being said, despite the optimism for global investors, we can certainly see evidence of a continued weakness in global economic data. We look at the Chinese data, the latest Kaishin manufacturing PMIs. They were disappointing, 48.3. That's a two-year low. Obviously, we are coming into Chinese New Year, so it's unlikely we'll see a significant pickup in February, but we could see a little bit of a pickup in March. But nonetheless, I think the... I think the outlook is slightly more optimistic, I think largely on the back of a number of factors, the first of which is that the China and, China and the US are still talking with respect to coming to a trade agreement and also the US Federal Reserve has pretty much backed up the rhetoric of earlier this month with a very dovish outlook with respect to monetary policy. Um, I think the Fed has woken up to the risks of moving too far and too fast. That has seen the dollar index come under pressure and we can see that from this chart here. That has put upward pressure on the euro. It's also put downward pressure on, on, on the dollar and we can see that from this series of daily candles here. I think there's a key support area on the dollar index. It currently comes in around about the 95 area, which more or less coincides, I think, with the 115.20 area on euro dollar. And I think that's one particular area I will be keeping a close eye on. And while I think that the, the sentiment towards the dollar has shifted, that, that's borne out by a significant decline in US Treasury yields. 10-year Treasury yields have dropped back quite substantially over the course of the past two or three days on that very dovish um, outlook from the Federal Reserve in January and the fact that they downgraded their growth um, description from strong to solid, I think it's a recognition that the Fed is likely to remain on hold for at least the next six months. And ultimately, I think there's a distinct possibility that we could actually be done in terms of rate rises for this year. Now, that's not a universally held view, but it's certainly one which I remain, I think, still fairly confident about, notwithstanding any potential negative effects from the US government shutdown. Now, as I, as I record this video, we've got non-farm payrolls coming up. And I think it's very unlikely that we will see the type of Goldilocks report 
that we saw as a result of the December number which showed uh, payrolls growth of 312,000 new jobs and wage growth of, of 3.2%. I think the payrolls numbers are now marginally less important than they were, say for example, two or three months ago and I think the reason for that is the fact that the Federal Reserve has signalled it's likely to be remain on pause for quite some time now so even if wage growth even if wages growth does edge higher while it may give a modest uplift to the US dollar it's not likely to change I think the overall direction which is that the dollar is likely to drift a little bit lower if US yields on the 10 years start to drift back to two and a half percent and you've also got a price in the prospect that um, the European Central Bank is unlikely to be looking at raising rates anytime soon. We can certainly see that in terms of the way the euro is trading. We have started to edge higher and I think the euro is starting to edge higher but more on the back of the fact that the Fed is unlikely to ease, um, sorry, the Fed is unlikely to hike anywhere near um, as much as markets as initially expected and that, as that starts to get priced out that is likely to exert upward pressure on the euro but make no bones about the fact that we're seeing a significant amount of euro weakness in terms of the economic data. Italy is back in recession. The uh, PMI numbers that we're seeing or likely to see out later this week in terms of services are probably likely to paint a significantly weaker picture than they did in December. Manufacturing has already come in very very weak for Italy as it has in Germany. I think there's a distinct possibility that German data in Q1 isn't showing any significant signs of picking up after a weak Q3, a fairly stagnant Q4 and any prospect of a pickup in Q1 is likely to be overhung by the fact that the Brexit um, on pass um, is unlikely to be unlocked much before um, the end of February or even the end of March and German manufacturing and the German economy is very exposed to a disorderly Brexit. We're not likely to get any progress on that before the 13th of Feb which is when the next parliamentary uh, vote is on the withdrawal agreement while the UK and the EU basically stare at each other um, relative to the red lines. The UK wants the withdrawal of the Irish backstop. The EU have said that the withdrawal agreement won't be reopened and ultimately I don't see there's going to, I don't see the, uh, I don't see that there's much um, outlook for any change of position going forward with respect to that, um, with respect to the relative negotiating positions of either party there. So what does that mean for cable? Well I think it means that cable upside is likely to be fairly limited. Um, despite the fact that we've got a host of UK data out this coming week. We've got the Bank of England uh, rate meeting along with the latest inflation report. We're not expecting any changes here. This is due on the 7th of February. Um, we could see a change to the inflation and growth forecasts and I th I, it's highly likely that the inflation and growth forecasts will be adjusted downwards. That could see the pound edge back towards 130 or even 129 and a half. The upside is likely to be restricted to around about 132 um, which were the highs of this week. We've also got the latest services PMI out of the UK that's, and that, that's due out on the 5th of February the construction PMI out from the 4th out on the 4th as well and we also have the latest um, RBA rate meeting. We also have a whole host of US data out later this week, non-manufacturing PMI and there could be the outside possibility that we could get a whole host of US data that was delayed from the US government shutdown. We don't have a precise date on any of this stuff yet so I think it's incumbent upon you guys to keep an eye out on the daily calendar for any um, any evidence that this data will be released and the data that we're missing is US GDP, durable goods, retail sales all been delayed from the US government shutdown and that could give us an indication as to the hit the US economy has taken as a result of that shutdown in terms of the US economic growth outlook. Other items to keep an eye out for for the coming week are the latest earnings updates from BP. We had a fairly decent update from Royal Dutch Shell this week. Um, 
uh, which showed that they're still generating some decent cash flow. We've also got Barrett Developments, UK house builders, should give in a good insight to the UK housing market, which is showing signs, increasing signs of stagnation in uh, the first quarter. But also we've got a whole host of US earnings as well from Twitter, GoPro and Snap. So that's it for this week. Thank you very much for listening. It's Michael Hewson talking to you from CMC Markets.